Good morning, CCSP. Today is Thursday, March 4th, 2021, and it is a period one through five day. Wow, there's so much going on today. I mean, there's so many national days that I think we need to mention. And, you know, it's Women's History Month. It's Irish American Heritage Month. And it's also our week for Read Across America. So this is my contribution to Read Across America. But before I tell you about that, let's do the um, standing operating procedures, as they say in the military, and do what we're supposed to do. First thing, during announcements. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Wow. So I hope you had a good Wednesday. Uh, today is a National Grammar Day. So while you're in class, remember to cross your eyes and whoops, whoops, got that wrong. Dot your eyes, cross your T's, be on your P's and Q's, you know, all that stuff. You know, do your best with your grammar. Today is also Hug a GI Day. A GI is a soldier. Uh, Ms. Stratton and Ms. Ramirez are veterans, so we were soldiers at one point in time. So hug a soldier. If you have one in your family, let them know that you appreciate what they did uh, serving their country. Uh, it's also Pound Cake Day. Hmm, what can I say about pound cake? I miss my mother's pound cake. That's what I can say about it. And it's also Son's Day. So if you have a son, let them know that they're special to you. Okay, now when we last heard our story, uh, Bluish, something had happened to Bluish in class and we didn't know what was going on. So let's see if we can figure out what happened, okay? We're starting off with a journal entry from Dreamy. Bluish, what Bluish had to say. A few days later, see, Bluish must have told Miss Baker. Class, Natalie has something to tell you, Miss Baker said. And Bluish said, now don't get me wrong, but me and my mom made some hats, see. I had to stay in bed when I got real sick way before. And then I found out I could do things with my hands. Bluish all the time has to stop, take a breath. So since I've been home, we finished making knit hats for everybody here. My mom helped me. Wow, that was nice of her, huh? Can you believe it? Every kid smiled at her and walked up to her to give her five. You move your hands slow at bluish. You don't jerk fast because she can't get out of the way and you might hurt her. Kids gave her a low five fingers. Kids said, you didn't have to. That's a lot of work. I didn't bring anything for you and Bluish said, I already did it. I don't want anything. And each kid got one. Bluish said, here, Jody, to Miss Baker. A lot of kids called the teachers by their first names. In my other school where I went, we didn't. So I called her Miss Baker. Everybody held their hats. Kids didn't want to look foolish. Bluish said, well, they're yours. You can wear them when you want. And kids saying Bluish's name like, Bluish, Bluish. Well, that's what we call her at Bluish's. Bluish's mom, I don't think she likes me, but I went to her house. Bluish, me, Tuli, and Willie. Why come? Because Bluish said we could, too. So funny, my bratty sister crawled up on the bed. They had game boys but willie put her thumb in her mouth curled up by bluish in her bed and went to sleep bluish looked at willie like she was a ba doll baby bluish's little mouth gave a grin i felt so good i knew bluish wanted to be there tuli sat on a chair couldn't sit still and had to touch everything in the bedroom right real nice place over on west end near 103rd street none of us was scared anymore she lives in this apartment called a classic eight. Eight rooms, big as a house. I loved it. 
and lucky the dog has a little bed on the floor in bluish foam, like black fur legs running, barking as a um, as its little black bark. So cute. Oh, I wish. We were sorting pictures at of Broadway. Her mom had said it was too cold for Bluish that Wednesday when she went out for our project. Willie had said, shoot, we could have helped Bluish have some fun. So I had to take all the pictures without her, my dad's camera. Truly show, showed us stuff. I know stuff about our hood, but Paula doesn't. She's from Brooklyn. But Tuli just sees stuff that I miss. She found this place. It was an Irish bar and a Chinese restaurant. Not too big, but with maybe six booths for eating egg rolls and stuff. Cool. Called Mr.'s side by side with a green four-leaf clover and Chinese writing. How'd I miss it? We only looked in. Then I took its picture, the yellow door and the red letter sign, tucked in there between a butcher's and a cleaner's. I took them too. I never even saw it. Maybe Mr. Side by Side only just got there. We got the film developed in a day. An evening later, Bluish called and said to bring the pictures over. She might be out of the uh, school the next day. So we did. We get there and I spread all the pictures on top of a sleep willy. And real easy, Bluish reached one to look at it. Paula couldn't come, said it would be okay whatever we picked. But if there was one thing she loved, we'd have to use it. Said she loved lightly shoes, Barzini's and Jay's fishes. Bluish, her mom, she is Rita Wilborn. Bluish's mom comes in and we stare at her and wait. Somehow we blurt out our names. She has brought out little cakes and milk. Tuli says, ooh, nice. We eat the cakes. I wake Willie. Bluish's mom is standing at the door with her arms crossed. Bluish kind of folds the bed covers up to her chin. She eats nothing. Her mom has dark hair and creamy skin. She is not brown. I've seen Bluish's dad, Mr. Winburn, is brown. I'm sort of sweet chocolate color. Tuli is more honey color. Bluish would probably be the combined creamy and brown, her mom and dad if she wasn't sick, but she is this ill color, not like anybody. She's bluish because I saw her and she made me think of moonlight, but she might get creamier, get rid of the blue someday. I hope so. We can hope and pray, Tuli once said. Bluish's mom is standing there and then her mom says, don't call her bluish. That's not nice. That is derogatory. I stood up. I must have shook my head. Don't you know it is not nice, her mom asked. Would you like her to call you bad names, looking right at me? Tuli was standing, staring at the mom and then at me. Bluish peeked through her fingers. That's not it, mommy, Bluish said. I know what you are thinking, and you are wrong. Tuli waited for me to say, but I couldn't. I didn't want to talk. I felt so bad. Then Tuli says, all fast, you tell her mom, Dreen, please, missus, and I couldn't. And then Bluish says, mom, it's not black and Jewish. Bluish, like a bad word. She spelled it out for her mom, B-L-E-W-I-S-H. But because I am so pale from the chemo, I am a somewhat bluish color. Get it? She spelled it out, B-L-U-I-S-H. And without the E in the blue, Bluish said, Dreeny didn't mean anything bad. I didn't mean anything bad. That's what I told the mom. I finally got it out. I never, I wouldn't. Bluish said, I bet not the other kids either. I bet only a few started it black and Jewish. She's not anyone but bluish, B-L-U-I-S-H. It was Willie spelling it and saying it to bluish's mom. Willie holding her hands up because they are stick, sticky with cake. She pipes up again, my kid sister. 
She's bluish. She's our friend. And then grinning all over her face, Willie, my bratty sister, and made bluish's mom laugh. Mom was concerned, huh? Because she didn't want anybody saying anything bad about her child or speaking badly to her. That's what moms do. And Mrs. Winbird said, oh, dads too. Well, I'd feel much better if you called her Natalie. They do sometimes, Bluish told her mom. And we said, we did, although not. Mm, somebody didn't tell the truth. But I never knew, e knew the B-L-E-W-I-S-H part. What of that? I mean, I never even thought to call her bad name because she's black and Jewish. I thought the kids were saying bluish. And what of B-L-U-I-S-H? Well, it's like Willie said. Bluish made me stop and look. She made me care about what was all so scary, so sad, and so hurt with her too. To me, she's just bluish child, bluish ill serious, bluish close with us. Someday bluish just like us, maybe. Chapter five. It's going to get fun. One day, the first thing Drini and her project group began mounting their pictures on poster board. They took turns deciding where each picture would go. Perfect, Paula said. All of the students were around their boards at tables and on the floor. Seems like they were doing a group project, hmm, working in group, wow. Bluish was in school this day and Drini and the others. She'd seemed the same, quiet, weak-like, but not better, not worse. Drini thought. There were still kids who would tease her because she looked so different in a wheelchair and because she knew she wasn't strong. They were mostly not in their class. Not often now did the classmates pick on her, so she'd come back with a strange remark. She was there, part of the class, and then they knew she wasn't strong. She was someone to watch out for. They couldn't treat her just like one of them because she wasn't. Drini was afraid Bluish would never be like the rest of them. Bluish couldn't move fast. She couldn't get rowdy. She could be so quiet. Some days she didn't even want her puppy around. She felt so bad. And then Drini would look out for her, look out for Lucky, hugging the dog, taking him out in the schoolyard in the cold every so often. She felt him tremble in her hands. She shivered too. Drini let the dog lick her face. Aren't we lucky, she thought, joking to herself and running around the playground, loving the puppy as if it were hers. Drini group, Drini's group took a long time to decide where the photos would go in their board. They finally agreed and pasted them up. Then carefully, they typed sentences on the computer about each picture. Then they printed them out. Next, they pasted sentences under the pictures. When the poster board was ready, they carried it to the stairs and taped it to the wall on the side of the stairway. It wasn't easy for Tuli and Drini to hold it upright while Paula taped it all around. Bluish watched from the top of the stairs. Does it look straight? They asked her. No, wait, now it does, she told them. There, Drini said, we're done. Max, ours is done. Look at that. First thing I ever helped make. Looking good, Thule said. Anyone coming up on the fifth floor or down the stairs could see their work. Other groups also hung their poster boards of photographs. Drini's group had titled their board The Big Apple Avenue in large dark letters. And right below that in bright red, it said, Broadway, yay! Some of the kids had done Broadway too. Not as good pictures, Drini said, and Paula agreed. Ours is the best, Bluish said, then whispered. But don't tell, it's not a competition. They all agreed not to brag. There were no prizes for the best. They'd been taught to try not to hurt one another. It was hard sometimes to always be nice especially for Thule. She liked to point out and go, ooh, ooh, that's oogly. 
but she did try not to boast. Wow. A lot of times kids are like that, huh? So we'll tune in tomorrow to see how this saga continues. Let's see if they're going to get the best poster. Even though it's not a competition, they did their best. So make sure you do your best today. CCSP, have a wonderful day of learning and teaching. See you next time. Oh, and don't forget about the Read Across America this morning.